Okay guys, what's going on? It's Nishra here, and we're back. It's Phantom Nightmare Weekend. That quarter century duelist event thing is going on. I'm probably not even watching it. Well, maybe I am at the moment. I'm I'm recording this beforehand. Snake Eye Popular is about to come out and dominate the meta, so I wanted to give you guys a sort of updated look at TGs and how TGs can use uh, Snake Eye's Popular to its advantage. First off, I want to say Bonfire is not necessary for certain strategies that want to play Snake Eye Popular. It's really only necessary in, I would say, Rescue Ace, because Rescue Ace does not want to use its normal summon when special summoning out the Hydrant because you want to normal summon out the Airlifter. But every other strategy that uses Poplar, the Snake Eye Ash is good enough. Like, like Ash and Wanted essentially does the same thing as opening Bonfire except you're using your normal summon instead of activating a spell card and also more ashes gives you access to snake eyes flamebird dragon in tg's case we have three more starters which is our limiter removal and we can play a really small tg package like if anything we we might not even need these other level ones like gear zombie boost raptor and drillfish really we might only need like gear zombie the, these other two we really don't need to play other than to resolve limiter removal to, to like start our combo with certain hands but nine times out of ten ash one for one or wanted will be enough for you to get the full combo so that's why we're just on cross out with a whole bunch of options we're also on anti-spell in main because anti-spell helps us it's very likely with the right hand we can draw into stuff with uh hyper librarian so digging into it will be a, a very likely so with the original tg combos if you guys watch my original T tg videos you know that hyper librarian can draw you up to three cards in your typical tg combo from your opening hand now that your combos pretty much every combo really besides break limiter only uses one card and diabell star but that's if you hard open diabell star without wanting to draw another card from deck and so only uses one card and you're drawing three more cards into your deck so it's very likely that you may see an anti-spell getting your draws off of Hyper Librarian. Now for extra deck, we're going to get into the spice later. We're really only having the Jet Warrior here for the Synchro Overtake. I, I do still think Synchro Overtake is a good option. If anything, I think Synchro Rumble might even be a stronger option now if you want something to search off a Crimson Dragon to give you a really good recovery play. This can revive uh, Star Guardian on your following turn and then star guardian can give can give you back another dragonar or you like your screw serpent or something or even like um a good number of options you definitely could bump the number of screw serpent and rocket salamander up to two um that definitely is an option if you want to play more engine or if you want to see more if you want to play rondrol better i would say bumping these up to twos or threes because these are really the main part of the engine that you need uh is definitely uh it's definitely an option you can take out the anti spells for when you're going second and stuff and so just play more engine if you feel like you really need it but yeah let's just get into some of the replays so this is really to show you what you, you what you can get with a single snake eye ash we can get from ash into poplar Poplar is going to trigger to get original simple spells, which allows us to summon Jet Synchron. Poplar comes back into Spell and Trap Zone. And then we, we can link off Jet Synchron to go into Relinquished Anima. Now we can use the Snake Eye Ash, sending the Poplar from Spell and Trap Zone to summon out Flameberg Dragon from the deck, right? And now that we have a Link 1 and uh, extra body on field, we can go into SP. And then the flame bird can revive to our two level ones, right? Now we could have easily gotten to two level ones without needing to go into Flameberg or into SP. But the fact that we get to make an SP and then go for our level two synchro, which if you watched my TG um, getting started with TG, you know that two level ones is how you start your combo. This is what starts the full TG combo. So basically it allows us to make a guaranteed SP Little Knight before our actual TG combo begins, giving us more protection through things like Nibiru, Imperm, Ash Blossom, and all that good stuff. 
You just have to know how to sequence it correctly. So when you have a fifth monster on field, it's usually very tough to get draws off of Hyper Librarian, um, especially because it, it's really all about when you can resolve Salamander. That's usually what's most important for uh, how you can resolve the TG Hyper Librarian. And uh, usually when you have a six monster on field, resolving Hyper Librarian's draw effect is usually not gonna work out because you're gonna need uh, to get the tank rub token and then that's going to take up the fifth slot and then so uh you're not going to have like the slots available or like the bodies available to like make hyper librarian and then go star guardian after usually you you may need to go star guardian first or you may not have the space to like keep the hyper librarian around for the next synchro to come out so just just be wary about that so We've made our three level fives, right? So we, we, we've we've went from Dragnar and Mighty Striker, and then we've turned our three, our, our, our four for the core, basically, right? Screw Serpent, Salamander, Mighty Striker, and Tank Rub, and we turned those into three level five synchros, two of, one of which is also used for Glade Blaster, two of which are used for the TGEX, and then we go into our typical TGEX combo. Banish the target, banish the eight, summon back the level two and then you get to go into crimson dragon during your opponent's turn so uh that equals calamity that equals whatever you want it to be so now uh i think with this new support gadget box becomes a way stronger card uh so and and you're gonna see why so we have poplar here we're gonna go up into rocket salamander which is really convenient right because we can just summon Rocket Salamander, Tribute Summon that Tank Rep, and then Populous gets to go and spell in Trap Zone. So, Rocket Salamander, Grub, Gadget Box, Free Token, Ash, go up into Flameberg, right? And guess what we, we get to make? We get to make Mighty Striker plus a level 8. Previously, this was not a consistent possible combo. Um, with with just engine previously you needed to play something like horse you needed to play something like gizmek orochi this was not previously possible but with uh popular and its ability to you know put itself in spawn trap zone to give you the extra card on field you need to resolve snake eye ash's full effect um you can now make a, a level eight plus uh, mighty striker which is level two and this works out well because you would think, well, you need the TG body to pop to resolve TG all clear. And as you're going to see, that will not be an issue, not just because of the token, but because Flameberg summons back our Rocket Salamander as well. So we have two TG bodies that we were able to get on field before all clear could be activated to get us our um, final piece of the TG four for the core. So. So we get the Screw Serpent here. We don't use a Salamander because it's a, his revival effect hasn't been used yet. And uh, Dragonar can take any non-tuner. It's really only uh, level fives. Just remember Star, Star Guardian and, and Wonder Magicians are the only ones that have mandated non-tuner restrictions for, for TGs. So just uh, keep that in mind uh, as you go about some of these combo lines. Um, that if you're gonna make a TG Scar Guardian, it cannot be with Snake Eye Ash. But if you're gonna use Dragonar or uh, TG Hyper Librarian, then it can be with the Snake Eye uh, stuff. So you go Dragonar, revive, go Hyper Librarian, we go Salamander to revive Screw Serpent. So Hyper Librarian allows us to draw one, uh, Star Guardian recycles to Screw Serpent. Unfortunately, Hyper Librarian can't stick around because it needs to be used. For uh, for Glade Blaster for us to make space for Screw Serpent. And we can Star Guardian here and Screw Serpent. And Screw Serpent didn't activate its effect earlier, actually. Um, we were able to get to Screw Serpent. We didn't use its effect to revive the Tank Grub at that moment, like at, at the beginning of the turn. And so now we get to, like, w we kind of weren't punished for that because now we get to summon back a level one non-tuner, which is our Rocket Salamander go into our final non-tuner level five, make make the TGEX, screw serpent target, uh, banish to protect, late blaster trigger, TG close trigger, summon back mighty striker, 
And so, yes, like, this makes Calamity, or, because this is so consistent, it can even make Crimson into Blazar. And so this is kind of like the point that I want to bring home uh, about TG is that TG does not need to make Calamity to to win. Um, that's kind of what I've wanted to emphasize in the latter half of my getting started with TG combo video is that Blazar in the right field is just as competent as a, a Archfiend King Calamity. And so even in this situation, right, we have one negate with Baron one of many kinds of negates with blazar we have blade glaive blaster who could banish two cards from that are summoned from the extra deck and then we have uh tg close sets and we could have just made calamity here we could have just we could have easily because we didn't resolve baron last turn um or e even if you do or so you can send the baron back to summon out something else from graveyard um and then we still have tg all uh tg close which is it being a counter trap gives it really high priority and makes it unable for your opponent to actually respond to it because uh, nothing beats B spell three. So it's very likely we still would have been able to make King Calamity successfully. So we mill the uh, limit remover for follow up turn, turn three. And so I kind of just let the opponent go into like SP, right? Just to kind of bring the point home, right? So let's say you like Baron negate the SP because to play around tactics, you, you save your TG close. Uh, let's say they, they want to SP temporarily banish your Blazar. I think instead of trying to negate that with Blazar, I'm going to let that happen. And then Glaive Blaster can actually steal the SP to my side. And this is permanently my SP Lono Knight. It doesn't matter if my opponent or... It doesn't matter if it gets temporarily banished by its own effect, it'll still come back to my field, on top of Blazar coming back to my field during the end phase. So, and we still have the TG close. So yeah, uh, Glaive Blaster just beats SP Little Knight, like through and through. There's no situation where SP beats this card, because oftentimes you'll always have the TG close with it as well. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. So now I kind of want to show you guys a play around Nib. Um, also using Gadget Box because Gadget Box just makes it a lot more convenient. So this time we're choosing the Jet Synchron, right? So we're using Snake Eye Ash and the Populous. And this is this is summon number four, right? Uh, summoning out the Flamebird Dragon here is summon number four. Uh, even if we used the wanted poster to start the combo, even if we went Diabell Star, Diabell Star, Ash, Populous, um, Jet Synchron is four, and Flameberg is Flameberg would be five in that scenario, meaning Flameberg, meaning they would have to nib here if they wanted to nib us at any point in time. And nibbing here would be very redundant, right? Because Flameberg would just bring back the two level ones and that still gives you access into TG Mighty Striker. So we gadget box. Boom. And so, yeah, I, I, I forgot to trigger the nib. So I just, you know, attempt to activate Flameberg second effect or whatever, just to get the nib to resolve. And boom level 11 token on our field but we get back the two level ones so we're never punished really we get to go up into mighty striker mighty striker gets to go into tg all clear and that's the full tg combo well nistro what about this ugly ass level 11 token well we get to use something like jet synchron right discard any other card in hand since again this was all off of one card discard our you know or i guess gadget box is is, is two cards um, go into Crimson, uh, and then from Crimson, we, we get to use Rocket Salamander, make Screw Serpent, Screw Serpent, Revive, Synchro 5, and then we get a Soul Charge. We don't get our 4 for the core, but we already have Crimson Dragon up, 
meaning we don't really need the fork for the core. It's better to just mill the TG close to get that extra protection than it is to get to mill the tank rub here. Because getting an extra level 5 synchro isn't going to mean anything if the card that we spent all our resources, or that we usually spend all our resources making, is already on the field. So we don't need to spend all those resources making it, right? So Star Guardian gets back Rocket Salamander, summon, and Rocket Salamander gets used as effect, summon back to Screw Serpent. Go into Hyper Librarian, which unfortunately we don't get to draw, but we can temporarily banish with Glaive Blaster to trigger both Glaive and our TG Close Engrave, and now we have uh, either Calamity Lock or we have Quasar, or we have a double Cosmic Blazar Interruption. It could be either or. Um, Nib is not really an issue here. The only thing Nib can do is swing over Star Guardian. So now I want to go over the OTK that, that this deck can do, or that the Snake Eye stuff gives you. So if you open the Snake Eye stuff, again, Pop Poplar just gets to go off. And this is a single-handedly one-card OTK. So we set up the Jet Synchron plus the Flame Bird, go straight into SP. We're not going to resolve SP's trigger, or we're not going to, like, attempt to resolve SP's trigger. Like, we're not going to go Link 1 and then go into SP because we want to attack directly because this is OTK. So we link up into Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess gets to revive a fire monster. We're gonna choose Flameberg. Because Flameberg has a lot of attack, right? Then we get to go up into Raging Phoenix, uh, because uh, while you're, while Promethean Princess is on the field, um, you, you're locked into fire monsters the same way while the guard dragons are on the field, you're locked into dragons. She's kind of that same way. So you can only go into fire monsters while she's on the field, meaning you, you want to get rid of her as soon as possible. So something like Raging Phoenix or Blow Whale um, are both Link 4 monsters that really work in this scenario. So now you go into Raging Phoenix and you immediately link off the Raging Phoenix for a Zeolantis because it can take a, a, a Link 4 as material, as the single material for its summon. And then Zeolantis can banish all cards on, or banish all monsters on field, and then revive the same number to each side, equal to as, uh, how how many were banished. Right. Now Promethean Princess triggers in the graveyard. Uh, if a monster is summoned to your opponent's field while it's in the graveyard, it gets to pop a fire monster you control and a monster your opponent controls, and uh, and then summon itself out by 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 popping both those cards. Well, it says. It says destroy them, so both don't need to be popped. As long as one is destroyed, she still gets to come back. So boom. And the Raging Phoenix triggers. So when one of your fire monsters is destroyed by a card effect, you, he can target that monster, gain, uh, he special summon himself, and then gain attack points equal to the destroyed monster's attack. So uh, assuming, you know, you went through the same combo and got Flameberg Dragon, Raging Phoenix is going to have a whopping 5,800 if you use Flameberg. Um, in, in Rescue Ace, you'd probably pop your own Turbulence, so it's very likely he'll be way more, he'll have way more than, uh, you know, his original attack as well. Um, and I kind of sequenced this wrong because I was, I was trying to show that you could still summon TG uh, Mighty Striker, and you definitely still could, right? Because um, the only thing that's stopping us here is uh, the the princess, but we have Gadget Box, and we just discarded one to summon out Jet Synchron from Graveyard, meaning we have a level one tuner, level one non-tuner. We could still go into full TG combo after all this is said and done. Well, maybe not the full combo, but definitely a, a really good chunk of it. <laughs> now that all this is said and done, but we have game on board, so we don't need to go for that combo. But I just want to show you that like, it's not too far detached from what um, Snake Eyes can do normally. So, yeah. Um, I know Gadget Box has been in a, a lot of these combos, but I definitely think Gadget Box is almost a staple in the deck now. Um, 
maybe play more level one tuners if uh, you're gonna go for gadget box or play more of the synchro overtake because I really love that card so that you, you get easier access into jet synchron um, but yeah this is uh, snake eyes in uh, TG and the deck just has a lot of synergy and I'm interested to see uh, how and I'm kind of surprised that more people aren't talking about this. It just seems like it's a really strong option if you just want uh, some, to play something different that also uses the wanted package. Um, the extra deck is kind of cloggy in here. Um, so Jet Warrior is really only here for the Synchro Overtake, right? If you don't feel like playing Synchro Overtake, which digs ju uh, Jet Synchron directly out of deck. Right, if you're if you're playing Jet Warrior, uh, but otherwise, then you don't need it. I also think that um, you don't need the Anima if you're gonna go into SP, right? Like if you're gonna go into the like OTK combo, then you don't need the Anima. You can just play, um, you know, Princess, Raging Phoenix, Zealantis, and then that's like the whole the whole OTK by itself. Uh, you don't need both. Blazar and Hot Red King Calamity in the same list. Usually your deck will only make one per duel, so you, you kind of just get to choose which one you want to make. I know Calamity is a lot stronger, so you may want to go for that, but Blazar just, uh, it gives you more freedom as to how, how you play your turn, so I think Blazar is strong within its own regard. So that's, this is kind of how I would balance it down or lower it down to 15 if you know, I had to, but yeah. I really do love TGs and I, I hope more people try this deck out. I know the wanted stuff is stupidly expensive. I know popular and this stuff is stupidly expensive, but at least try the deck out. Um, it's a really cool synchro deck and I hope uh, more people just try it out based on this disinformation. So let me know what you guys think about Phantom Nightmare, Poplar, and Snake Eye in the comment section below, and uh, see you in the next one.